Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're going to be looking at the MSA Altair 4X. It's a bit of an older unit, but we didn't have a video up, so we want to put one together. I'm going to get this started. Press and hold the middle button. Monitor will beep and flash, and it's going to get started up. And then while this is starting up, it's going to go through a check button, and it'll show you all the different alarms. It'll start making sure the sensors are okay. If you have an error here, uh, let me know. Uh, just either leave a comment or shoot us an email, and we'll get back to you and try and help you troubleshoot it. Uh, but usually it just discovers all the four sensors, and it'll go through and start telling you the alarm limits and what the last calibration date was, etc. So we'll let that go through, and in the meantime, we're going to get our regulator and our tubing set up to do the calibration. First things first, I'm going to take our regulator. It's a 0.25 liter per minute regulator, C10 fitting. Uh, don't mind this. If, if it shows you this right here, what it's saying, there's a difference from the last time it was turned on. Uh, we changed the sensor out. So you can just bypass that with the right button if, uh, if that pops up there. Sometimes it pops up when it's not supposed to. But if it does, just make sure you calibrate. So in the meantime, we've got a 0.25 liter per minute regulator, C10 fitting, which is this type right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our calibration adapter here, which is the MSA Altair series calibration adapter for the 4 series, and put our tubing on. Here. You don't have to go all the way down to the base, but I usually try and get just a little bit more than what's on here. If you have trouble with the tubing, getting it on there, sometimes when it's a fresh regulator, it's a real bear to get it on. You can take a pen or something like that. We, use, we keep this specifically in the shop just so that we can use this tip here. Uh, just push it in there and kind of spin it around and you can open it up. Just make sure you're not using an open pen where you're going to get ink all over everything. Okay, so we got our regulator here. And in the background here, this, this asks us if we wanted to do an FAS. We just let, we just let it sit. Uh, I don't like the FAS zero personally. Uh, I think it's better just to bypass it. So you can either hit this right button to say no, or you can just let it go. I just prefer using a full zero uh, or a calibration, and the FAS is kind of a halfway zero, so to speak. Uh, it's a zero with very low tolerances. So, uh, that aside, let's get this calibration gas cylinder prepped and ready. So, first thing we're going to do, take a look at the cal gas. We want to make sure that we have on here the right calibration gas values. It's 20 parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 60 parts per million carbon monoxide, 58% LEL pentane simulant, so it might also say 1.45% by volume methane, uh, and then 15% oxygen here with a nitrogen balance. Now, next thing you got to check, you need to check this expiration. Ours is right over to the right uh, from the cal gas values, but depending on what manufacturer made your gas, uh, it may have been maybe anywhere on here. But it's always going to have either a manufacturing date or an expiration date. Uh, typically, expiration date is going to be two years after the warranty date, but, or after the manufacturer date, but might vary just depending on who your manufacturer is. Ours is a two-year warranty. So make sure you check for that and make sure you're good to go. Okay, so that's all set. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the regulator and unscrew it. This is an important step. What you want to do is you need to open the space here. Uh, when you open this valve here, there's, there's about, if you look down in here, you can see there's a hole there. And what happens is if this is closed off here and there's room air moisture that can, that's up inside of this thing, or any condensation or anything like that, when you screw it into the cylinder, you're essentially creating one enclosed space here with the cylinder. And that moisture can go back into your cylinder and that can start to degrade your H2S. So you want to make sure you open this, that way it blows the moisture out if there's any in there. So that's open, so what we're going to do is Go ahead and screw this in here, and you just wait for it to pop and uh, start spewing gas a little bit, just like that, and then go ahead and close off your valve. Now, your gauge might be a little different than mine. Uh, this one goes up to 1,500 PSI. Some of them go up to uh, about 1,000. Some of them go up to 500. So your, your bar might be a little bit different on yours. Uh, but if you look here, I'm around... Uh, right about 150 PSI. So probably about another 50 or so PSI and we'll, we'll swap this cylinder out. Uh, I don't generally like using them much below 100 PSI. Just the, the flow just doesn't seem to do as well. So somewhere in that 50 to 100 range, I would replace it. Okay, so here we go. Got our calibration gas cylinder, our regulator, and the gas monitor here. Another decent point to remember, make sure you've got a decent charge for this. See how we've got a half a bar? If we were down at one bar, I'd probably recommend charging the unit before you do so. Uh, the LEL sensor takes a lot of battery. 
uh, when it's fired up. So you want to just make sure you got a decent charge. Sometimes when that gets low, it changes your response on the LEL sensor. So to zero it, here's what we're going to do. We're going to press and hold the right button. Make sure we're in clean air, nice and fresh. It's going to ask us if we want a zero cal. Great. We go ahead and press the middle button to confirm. Now it's going to say sensor refresh, and that's it saying it's going through a zero. So we make sure we're in nice clean air. Uh, we don't have anything on the top of it here. We're not breathing directly on it. And we're just waiting for that screen to pop up and say that it's past the zero, and then we'll apply the calibration gas to it. So the reason I like this more so than the FAS, uh, the FAS is like a very low tolerance. So if your sensors have drifted a little bit, uh, it's going to fail it, and then you're going to be dealing with a fail situation. When in reality, if you just started with a zero, if you know you have clean, fresh air, no matter where it is on the curve, if someone was using it and screwed it up, it's going to apply the proper zero to it, uh, which is what it's doing right now. Now, so going through this, you just want to make sure you have your cow gas and everything's ready. Uh, there's a couple tricks to putting on the cal adapter, and I'll show you that when it gets to that stage. But you have to do it a little bit quick once the screen pops up, and sometimes the first time it takes a little while. So if you screw it up, don't worry about it. You can always just get back to calibration mode. And it should just be a few more seconds here. There we go. Okay, so that means the zero is going well. This is the final stage of it. It's going to pop up on the screen and show zero accepted, and it's going to ask if you want to span. Perfect, zero pass. Span cal. We want to make sure these numbers here match our gas. We're going to say yes, we do want a cal. Okay, to do that, hit the middle button, click, put it into that thing on the side, another little one on the other side, get that locked in, and now get your top portion locked in and turn your gas on. Turn it in, open it up all the way, and I usually back it off just a little bit. Not certain if it actually does a change, but it's how I was taught, so it's how I do it. Okay. Now you can see the values on here changing over time. And so what it's trying to do is it's trying to take the values in gas, which is what it sees right now, and it's going to adjust them to what it should be, which is the 58, 15, 60, and 20. Uh, it's going to take a few seconds for that. One thing to keep in mind uh, that's interesting about MSA units, specifically the XL units like this 4X, the LEL sensor on here has two separate sets of beads. There's one, they just swap between it. And every time you zero, it changes. So you might notice a big jump uh, when you zero or calibrate it. So one way to make up for this is we actually recommend you calibrate this unit twice. So go through, do your zero and calibration. Uh, and then once the set's done, go ahead and do it again. Okay, perfect. Now we see 58, 15, 60, 20. Turn our gas off. And let's pop the top. All good. And so now that the gas is out of there, it's going to start eating that up inside the cell. So it'll start dropping these down. The LEL sensor reacts really, really quick. Uh, so that one drops down sometimes the quickest. Uh, you can see this one. See this one? How this one's gone negative. So now what's happened here is it's probably had some sort of inhibitor on the sensor. And when we ran the calibration gas over it, it's clearing that out. So now what's happened is actually it's changed how it reads. So before it was reading a little bit higher, it's cleaned some of that stuff off. So now it's reading negative back on the zero side. So in an event like this, I would go through and I'm going to recalibrate this unit. Uh, and what we'll do is I'm actually going to go ahead and wait a few minutes and redo that. And then I'll uh, catch the video back up here uh, during the second calibration so I can show you. But keep in mind, this doesn't mean anything is broken on the unit. It's just something that happens when... Uh, crust builds up inside of that LEL sensor uh, and when you calibrate it it kind of goes through this process so we see this pretty commonly in the shop and just remember you just gotta calibrate it one more time uh, sometimes it's a thing in the field even not just MSA units but other units sometimes you want to calibrate them they haven't seen gas or they've seen a lot of bad stuff uh, you'll want to let them sit for a minute and recal so I'm gonna pause this video here and then we're gonna pick it back up in just a minute okay so we just passed our second cal I'm going to turn this gas off again. And I'll pop the hood here. Now, thankfully, it's not going to 
alarm at us for a minute, they turn the alarms off after a calibration on this unit. So we're going to let it fall back down, and let's see if it zeroes properly this time. Okay. It stayed at zero so far, that's a good thing. H2S down to zero. And CO, it's still metabolizing the gas in there, and it looks like our oxygen's back up to normal. Okay. So the standard zero and calibration procedure goes. So now, once you've done this, you're going to want to go through and do a bump check on the unit afterwards to make sure it's ready for the field. So normally I'd let this sit about you know, five, ten minutes before we, we go through and do a bump test on it. Uh, but just, just for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and do one right now. I'm going to walk you through how to do that on this unit. So to get to the bump test menu, press this right button here. And it'll come up asking us if we want to do a bump test. And we do. We'll hit the middle button. Get our calibration adapter on here. Now it's looking for gas. You can see that because it has this little thing looking there, and it's looking for this check. And now we've turned the gas on. It's seeing the gas now. So now we don't have to do this for very long. It's a pretty quick process. Uh, let's get, perfect. There we go. Turn the gas off. And perfect. Now we've done a bump test. You don't always need to get do a calibration for a bump test, but each day before you go out in the field, you should bump test the unit. And the things you're looking for as well is you want to, just want to make sure that you're watching these flashing alarms go off. You can feel a vibrating alarm going off when you're doing the, the bump test, and you can hear that horn nice and solid and loud. Okay. Now we're back down to 000, 20.8. That's perfect. Uh, MSA uses 20.8 instead of 20.9, so you might notice a difference on other monitors. But now you are, we're all set to go. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call here. It's at 734-956-0539. Or you can shoot us an email to support at idealcalibrations.com. And, you know, we welcome any sorts of weird gas questions. And if it's something we can do in a video, we'd be happy to explain it. So make sure you uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks and have a good day. Stay safe.